You're joking, right? Well, yeah. I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic yeah. about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid. Hey, hey, hey. With a mouthful of chocolate covered cashews. They're my favorite. They're your favorite. Are oh, these good ones? These are new. So, how do you, what are you thinking about this brand? I did an impulse buy. I was watching late night. I watched uh, Nuts.com came on. Well, a commercial for Nuts.com came on. And I'm like, first I said, who the fuck right. buys Nuts.com? How right. And then you see the ad, and he's got a warehouse huge since 1927. It's huge. It's fucking, a Jewish family. But huge fucking company. Yeah. On the back of the thing, it says, Grandpa Saul started the company, and now it's run by David and whatever. It's like, oh, they're definitely Jews. I love it. Right. So <clears throat> I went ahead and ordered regular cashews, and I ordered... Um, Chocolate covered ones. He was so excited all week. He's like, "My nuts come in two days." So, and then today he's like, "Where are my nuts? Where are my nuts?" <laughs> so I say every time to now, "Where are my nuts?" No, um, they're good. All right, you got it. Yeah. That's what I wanted. I can never when get you never, it. When you label them, they're labeled right here. So, um, they're good, but they're, they're similar to the CBS ones in a can. They're bigger. Um, but also, you're buying from a, a small business, which is nice. That they all they do is specialize in nuts. So you're supporting right. an industry rather than CVS, who does who, you know, they're everything. I'm fine with it. <laughs> the chewing. So I'm gonna be chewing in your ear for a little bit, Sarah. This is like a little therapeutic for me. That's definitely a a John Bloom um, thing. A treat. A John Bloom treat is a and you know chocolate covered cat. You know I also love probably the rainbow cookies. You do love rainbow oh, cookies. Oh, I'll fucking destroy it. I get that from my dad. The little, the little almond flavoring to it, right? Amaretto, whatever it's called. Yeah, like that's why I like these to run on ice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only drink that dad actually enjoys drinking. It's De Sirono. Oh, nice. I mean, hilarious. It's the commercial. It's so, I like I've it. never and you just met do, you do anyone else those, who, for, who is like, yeah, I'll have a De Sirono, please. On, rock, on the rocks. Oh, God. Just, so you can do this when they're like, yo. You, you can't you, unless you're watching. You if you're not watching, you won't get it. You'd be like, watch the movie. This we do. He's throwing on the rocks. That's it. And you move on. Like like they do a second. Yeah, movie. because you're such a drinker. Because you know drinking culture for sure. Have you ever been drunk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Well, welcome guys. Episode forty four of the show. We had a lot more patrons. Huh? No, episode forty four of the main show. Patreon. We're doing episode twenty seven. This week, a Patreon. Uh, you know what we need to talk about a little bit later? Not the board of listeners. About your Zoom call yesterday. I want to talk to you further about it. Yes. Where we're at with Okay, that. we don't need to talk about I, that. I, on I the, said on a the, little bit later. Just remind yes, me. yes, yes. Okay. So like you need to fix my my trimmer. Yeah, I have an email sent out for that. Beautiful. Don't worry. Love it, Ronnie. Um, hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hope if you, you are well. watching and not just listening, make sure to smash the subscribe button. On YouTube. Smash it. Click the little like no, the button and, you know, ring the little notification bell. Click that so that when our videos come up, you get notified of it. I should have done that when I watched the other one. I didn't do that. So that big subscribe thing. What is that? Ooh, there you go. The big subscribe thing means to subscribe to the show for us. Gotcha. So what's yeah. up, Brian? You got your hair cut? Got my hair cut Barney's yesterday. coming back to California with us in October. We just booked his ticket. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that just hit the mic into my face. I will be back in LA first week of October. Well, we're for going all October, of you all. We're going back October 6th. We're going to visit Burke at USC for Parents Weekend. Our friends Dan and Michelle are coming. We're going to have a great time. And then we, we're going to end it a week in Napa. Um, but, Brian's Fancy. Gonna, but Brian's going to come out for Friday. No, Thursday through Thursday Monday, through Monday because it's Columbus Day. Yeah, just and go to hang. see Burke and see my friends. It'll be fun. I'm excited for that. And then maybe what we should do is why don't we put another meetup? We can up? do another meetup. Yeah. Let's do that. Fuck it. Why not? Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. But I did want to take a sec before we, I mean, we are starting, we already are in the show. But after last week's episode, I just wanted to thank all the listeners for their support. Like so many people reached out to me directly through Instagram through my personal Instagram, through the... It's a big cashew. It's a big nut. It's like a turkey. I'm used to big nuts, though. Oh, wait. No, I meant mine. I meant <laughs> I mine. It. I knew it. Something you want to talk about? Fuck, I meant my you nuts are big. emotional. Why don't you tell the truth? Fuck. That, that, I, wow, that was yeah. horrible. Wow, I got it. Um, but I, I just wanted to say thank you for the support. So many people reached out, and it was super nice um, and meaningful that our listeners care about us, which is great. Yeah, and, and I have to tell you something. 
I never watch or listen to the podcast for some reason. I just because I'm, I do it. That one I did watch. Uh, it was beautiful. I thought it, I loved it. I thought it was great. I, it was nice. I thought it brought us closer. Um, I think it's a growing thing for you. And um, no, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful podcast, and we got such really nice. And so many people reached out and were like, so many nice feedback. So, so many much. people were like. I know exactly how you feel. I'm going through that right now myself, or I went through that a couple of years ago. Like you're not alone in that. It's a no, that's like totally relatable, which is another nice thing. What that like? Yeah, we all go know. through the same shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All humans, we all are dealing with the same no, stresses. The, the, the reach out of the people that listen, it could not have been fucking nicer. I mean, we have the best listeners. I'm sorry, we do. We have the best listeners. Yeah. So thank you Hands all. Down. Thank I appreciate you. Everybody. Yep. Yeah, and we'll. Uh, you know, so today, well, in two days from now, so when this comes out, will be officially, officially one year of me coming back to Florida. I came back August 30th. Wow. To Florida. And now you're here permanently. Now I'm here permanently. Isn't that literally wow, things change. a Isn't that year? Amazing how things change? August 30th. I Because last night, so, uh, last night one of my friends was asking me they were like how long have, has it been since you and your ex broke up and I was like you know it's probably coming up just on a year so I went into my like into my phone and was going through when I booked my when that like I tried to find the ticket for me for, to come from LA to Florida after our road trip and it was August 30th and so it's like yeah. that is wild you know, the amount that's changed in this year the only time you cried a year ago was when I when you told me you broke up with her when I told you to take the red eye home and I was in Nashville. Yes, wherever I was. So I guess I'm I cry once a year. That's my that's, that's my okay. Deal. Listen, that no, year, I have nothing against crying. Correct. I'm like I don't hold in cries ever. I just never. I literally will feel a cry come on once a year. So one so one isn't year. that wild? It's been think a good about, year. Don't you think? It's oh, it's been a, been a great year. Probably the best great. year of my life. Oh, that's nice. And you've been with us. Yeah, but I mean, pro- like I just think I'm. You saved the most money. Yeah. Those days are over. Yes, those days are over. Um, but I I think I just feel like the best uh, this year than I ever have, probably. Um, you and Bryce have a lot of good things ahead of you. Yeah. you both going to your apartment. You're going to be in Miami. You're starting. You're just going to have good times. You're at a good good point in your life. So I, I only wish you the best. And then it's just crazy. Life. I think so much has changed in the last year of my life. So it's like, what what's August 30th, 2022 going to look like? Crazy. Probably not as much change. Definitely not as much change. But still, who the fuck knows? Well, you'll be in Miami. You'll probably have a relationship. Whether it's a girl or a guy, I don't know yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's the biggest nuts I've ever seen in my mouth ever. Oh, that came out wrong. Um, but um, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be good for you. Either you and Bryce are gonna love each other, or hate each other. But I think you'll love each other. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. We've yeah. already started bickering in the house. No, that was funny. This week, because now funny. we're like the move is official, right? So we're moving into our apartment September tenth. We have our place. My furniture is coming from LA. So now explain, it's like official. Explain the place and what the bathroom situation. That's what the argument was. Okay, about. so so our apartment is cool. It's a loft, so it's two floors. Great um, location, by the way. It's two floors and the second, both bedrooms are on the second floor. One bedroom's open. It's like lofted into the living room. Um, but it's big. And it's all like big industrial style, like warehouse style. But there's one bathroom on the second floor and one bathroom on the first floor. And both bedrooms are on the second How floor. How many steps? 12. Okay. Um, and so I said to Bryce, I was like, look, you're going to use the downstairs bathroom. That's your bathroom. My bathroom is the upstairs one. And he's like, what do you mean? Why is why did you just decide that? I'm like, one, because I'm the oldest. Two, it's all my fucking furniture in the apartment. And three, because I said so. Like, that's just how our that's the dynamics of this relationship, just so you're aware now. Bitch. That's what it is. And he's he's so, like, but, but if I want to go pee, right, he goes, that's fine. But like in the middle of the night, he's like, if I want to pee, I can do that. And then in the middle of the night, like if I have to poop, I'll, I can use the ba- upstairs bathroom. I was like, who the fuck poops in the middle of the night? He doesn't. He's just saying it. He just, he just, he's betting his hedges, I guess, or whatever. whatever hedging his bets. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> betting his hedges. Yeah, it's the big nut. These, these bushes are really good. I'm, hedge, it's, I'm it's, betting it's the, them. It's the big nut in my mouth that's confusing me. But there's definitely going to be some fights in the apartment. But the good thing is that he's my younger brother, so I know that I can just like be like, don't fucking do that. But you guys are best friends. You get along. Completely opposite in many ways, similar in many ways. We're actually going to go after this podcast. We're going to buy Bryce some furniture. 
Yes, we right? are. Yeah. Not we, you coming. I'm buying it. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay. That was like, hey, what's that box over there on the top? Do you know what that is? That's the printer toner box. Oh, thanks for installing it. We don't need to install it yet. That's an that's the extra so that when what's we run the one out below it. The koozies, the daddy issues koozies. So if you want one of those, we still have those. Oh my, well I had to buy 250 of them. <laughs> we, bring, we sold like 50. You're bringing it in Miami with you. You can have to people. Yeah, they're just a thing. Actually, you know what we could do? If you Promotion. guys sign up, if you guys sign up for the Patreon we'll for, the, for, the, for the year, not just like for the month, if you prepay for the year, which you get a 10% discount anyways, if you prepay Patreon for the year, we'll send you a koozie. That'll, we'll just send and it to you for I'll free. I'll even sign it if you want. Yeah. So that's patreon.com slash daddy issues pod for that. What is it? Patreon.com slash daddy issues pod. Okay. So also they don't want you to sign it. They want me to sign it. Fuck you. Okay. They don't want you to sign it. We know. Let's close. Let's be honest. We're being what? honest and, and true, right? You were very true with your feelings. I'm very honest. Yeah. I know you are. They I, I think to more it. would want you to sign it. Yes. I would say 90% would want me to sign it. I think they would want you to sign it more than me, but I don't think they wouldn't want me to sign it. There's a difference there. You said they don't want me to sign it. They don't want you to sign it. I think they I would were, want. I think they would want both of us to sign it. I think they. But if they made, had to choose one or the other, I think they would want you. Correct. Because you all it is is because you're older, so you're going to die sooner. So there's less time they can get no, signatures of yours. I'm. I'm no. I'm so funnier, your, your signature will become valuable I'm more, more no, easy that, quicker than mine will. Death, not, and you don't know. Right. Yes, that's what no, it is. I'm they healthy. tell me. No, they tell they me. They don't tell you shit. Yes, please. they do. Please. I think it's I'm better looking. I have more to say. I'm smarter. They agree with what I have to say. That's so mean. You're my father, and you're I saying all you. that stuff. You want me to lie? <laughs> yes. Okay. They would want you to sign it. <laughs> Come on, I love you, Bronnie, but you know that. But you're you're better looking, smarter. Or now, how are you better looking? Do you, do you think mom is attractive? Do you think mom's good looking? Yes. And do you think you're good looking? Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm the mixture of two, the both you of you. Are the best so looking. I'm. Don't worry. So scientifically, I'm objectively more attractive than you are because I have your attractive level and mom's attractive level. Well, you could have gotten worse qualities of both of us. But I didn't. I got the best qualities well, of both we'll of you. We'll be the judge of that, Bronson. I actually do think I got the best qualities of both of you. Like, I think okay, I... Okay, why don't you tell me what those are? No. What is yeah. my... Why I think I, I think I got... Because I think I got your personality in terms of, like, the confidence level, the, um, like, independence, the not Outgoing. caring what people think, the... But you're going to change that. No, you can but, remember your delivery. Right. But but still, like I am confident enough in myself With where I'm are. cool to do what I want to do and I don't and I don't need other people. Please anybody, right. Val, you don't need that validation. So I got that stuff from you. But Good. then from mom, Wait, I that's got that's it, only two? You said independent and I, I, I made like four things. Confidence, independence, don't stop. uh self reliance. Don't stop. Keep I'm going. naming only the good qualities. There's only a few of them. Fuck. Damn. And, and then from mom, I definitely got her like Niceties. Empathy mm-hmm. and uh, like looking out for other people mm-hmm. and her like hostessness. You know how like mom always want like. Oh my God, do I know? Like mom always like Look, mom likes making not even. Yeah, but I don't even think I got that. Mom just is always looking out for people, making sure that they're happy, like people mm-hmm. that she cares about. And I think I do that. Okay. Um, those are probably the, I don't know. You didn't I don't mention know. looks. I don't know who, I think I look like a mixture of both of you. I think I do. What negative qualities do you think you got from us? That, that's what I'm saying. I think I got just the good Same. qualities. I don't think I have negative qualities. Okay. <laughs> what negative qualities do you think I got from you? Do you think any of the boys got positive and negative qualities? Yes. Well, we all have positive and negative qualities. Well, I'm asking you negative It's ones. hard it's honestly hard for me to... By the way, I just want everyone to know it's my last cashew in the cup right now. It's hard for me to objectively look at myself in a negative light because I, I just... It's like, I don't know what negative qualities I have. I think I'm... I think you need to be a little more empathetic. Yes. I think you need to be a little... Um, <clears throat> I think you need to... Uh, you fidget. You get that from... That's you, not a negative quality. Okay. Oh, Maybe it is. <laughs> I, I think... I don't think any of our boys really have negative qualities, but I think you need to be a little more com- compassionate. Yeah. But we, that was a last episode combo. We, we've gone through that. Um, what about the other boys? What do you think about the other boys? I think Bryce is very sensitive. 
I think that's he got that negative. from mom. I think that's a, I'm that's not a, saying negative. No, I think that's I'm just nice saying qualities. Quality. Yep, he's sensitive. There are negative aspects to it, but there are negative aspects See, to I, all I, qualities. The thing is, I can remember with Bryce too, because I look at Bryce like he's my big buddy and he's still sensitive. And I got to remember that he is sensitive. So I got to, you know, you, there's a visual component and there's an emotional component. And yeah, he's he's definitely sensitive, which is, I think it's a sweet, nice quality. But you're yeah. right, it could be a plus and a negative. I, I think it's both. Sometimes it's positive. It's for him, sometimes it's curse, negative. Brother. Yep. Yeah. I think Burke got your, um, not work ethic, but your, like, Drive motivation. For money. for money? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I don't really have that. Which I don't be, have it like you and Burke You do. might be better off, because I think in the long run, you'll be, the, I, the irony is, I think you'll be better off. Having me being driven by the financial success, I'm not joking, is a blessing and a curse. Yes. Because... On one hand, you want to do it, but then the other hand, you you want to keep feeding the beast, so to speak. So mm-hmm. you so you can get down yourself, you can get aggravated, you can stress if you're not having a good week or whatever it is, and then you become that you when is enough is enough, and you want more, and and it's weird because on one hand, the money and the success gives you security, but I think it's your insecurity. That drives you to have to obtain those things to help mm-hmm. you feel more secure. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yes. And then with the people, a lot of times who don't care about money, and that becomes successful because they just don't care about it. But I don't like the people that talk about money. They think they work hard or whatever it might be, and yet they don't, and they complain why they don't have money. We do know that money comes with hard work. That's a that's a true parallel. Equation. And it does make your life better. Like when people say money can't buy happiness, it's like, oh, it, no, it does. No, oh, it helps. Yeah, it certainly it, does. It helps. The lifestyle, yeah. whatever. So that's just bullshit. It, it definitely, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't define you, but it makes right. life easier. 100%. And gives you better things. But there's no doubt that I think, think about luck or things like this or invention. I don't think it can make you satisfied, but I think it can enhance your life. Right. So I think that honestly that you, you can't have money, for the most part, make a general statement, Without working hard, I th- doesn't mean if you work hard you always have money, but I think in order to get money you need to work hard, um, unless you marry into it or you hit the lottery or or you know something there's l- a luck component. But the people that talk about that they don't have money, they're not working. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, they think that they, they talk about that, but they kid themselves. Like I actually, I don't. I'm not so driven by like making a lot of money. I don't care about that that much. I do want to make money just so I can live a life that I want to live. But I also am okay with working. Like I'm not against hard work. And I know that that <laughs> oh, comes with uh, it. Oh, positive quality about all three of my boys. None of them are afraid to work. I think they get that from me. They've seen how hard I work. I work every night when I get home. And I think that just they And just, you just always talked about it when we were young. You were just like, that's what you got to do. That's what your life is. Like, you just have to work hard if you want things. Right. So I don't even view work as like a chore or anything. I'm just like, that's just life. It's Me like, either. I don't view getting up, like waking up in the morning. Never, literally. Never bothered. Or you, right? like brushing my teeth. I don't view those things as chores. It's just like, that's life. That's just part of it. So I don't view it in a negative right. way. I never, that's how I view work. Right. I, I never bitch about going to work. So I don't think you kids, you have that same feeling because uh, as a role model, and that's all you've seen and known, right? Yeah. So well, I know plenty of people who like constantly are complaining about work. Yeah, which I don't get. You need to work. It's yeah. to be productive. You know, so like, I think that that's a good positive quality that all three boys got from me is the hard work, good work. None of my boys are afraid to work, Mm -mm. which is a good quality. And And none of us are complainers, which I think is good too. That's a good quality. Mom's not a complainer. No. I'm a little more of a complainer. Not terribly, but I'm a little more of a complainer. It's just my personality. All right. Should we talk? This is a total change, mm-hmm. but should we talk about Afghanistan? Because there were definitely developments. Do you want to? Yeah, let's talk about do you it. Wanna, yeah. All right. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, our homies. Hook, they hook me up all the time. I mean, I literally, I Manscaped my face yesterday. I noticed you looking the, the trim and right nice. Here. I noticed that. So you I, used, I used my weed whacker, which is the, nose, the ear and nose hair trimmer. I got my nose. I got right above my beard with the shed, okay. which is their razor. So I did that yesterday. It feels good. I like it. I wish the hand was a little longer. On the nose hair trimmer? The weed no, whacker? the razor. It's a little thing. The shed. The, yeah, the actual I guess, razor. The straight I guess edge you razor. do it because if you do your balls, you, you, you're more control. Oh, you're talking about the, yes, the ultra smooth package is very small. Yeah, and I guess that's for, I'm using for my balls. chest. It's very, and it's the best for your balls. So 
you guys should definitely check out Manscaped. They have great products. Uh, specifically, check out the Performance Package 4.0, which comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, which is their brand new state of the art trimmer with their skin safe technology. It is Comple- the best. Completely waterproof, wireless charging. It has a new LED light on it, which is great. So, you have a trimmer that doesn't have a light on it. It's really helpful, honestly. When I go down there and I'm like, especially if I'm like in my ass, you know, between in my taint, if I, you know, you have to lift the balls if you go, have to go under the taint. It's dark down there. So having a little LED light is really helpful. And you do it in the shower and it's fully waterproof. So it's great. The lawnmower 4.0 is definitely well worth it. Great gift for everybody. If you, if you want that, check out the Performance Package 4.0, which not only comes with the lawnmower, but it also comes with the Weed Whacker, which is the ear and nose hair trimmer. comes with a couple of their skin products, which are awesome. A, a there's, must. There's yep. a ball deodorant that'll keep you dry and smelling good down there. Manscaped will even throw in a free pair of boxers and a free travel bag in the Performance Package 4.0. So definitely check that out. We love it over here. We, we, all the boys got it. Yeah. yeah, we got four of them. That's the Bloom, how much we fam- love the Bloom family is just we love it. Mans- we're in a manscaped house, and our friends love <laughs> it, and 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 the wives should get it for their husbands or boyfriends, whatever it is. I'm telling you, the, the, it's a great fucking gift, and it's a practical gift, and it's been a game changer for me. I had the prior version, which I thought was the cat's meow. This blows it away. It's like going from a Chevy to a Rolls Royce. I love it. Uh, we're big supporters of Manscaped, and I think it's fucking great. Absolutely. So if you guys are interested in that, you can get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using the code DADDYISSUES20. Once again, that's 20% off. I mean, a great deal. The prices are already great, but with using the code DADDYISSUES20 at manscaped.com, you get 20% off. Not only do you help yourself, you help the show. It's a win-win. So definitely manscaped.com, use code DADDYISSUES20. You get 20% off, free shipping, what are you waiting for? Order it now, you'll thank us. I don't think, again, back to Biden. So when, he's, when he gave his uh, speech on Thursday, okay? After the bombings, which I'm sure everyone knows about, right. just so, to give some context. Right. So I don't, when I listen to him, he doesn't anger me. I have a little compassion. I'm like, he's just, he's done. He's like an old man that just talks gibberish. And what he speaks about doesn't make sense. Like, like when I used to watch Hillary... It would anger me. Because you know there was there was a conniving aspect to it. You knew that she was a, evil. She was planning she's things evil. that she, no, and she's, she was she wasn't evil. saying what she meant. She's evil. When I watch him, you know, I just get this. I'm like, this guy's got to hang it up. Like, what is? And then I feel bad for him. Like, it's someone's grandfather. Like, just he might talking. be hanging it up soon. There's know, a lot let, of calls let, for impeachment. I know. I know. I know. Well, let's. Well, I don't want to talk about that just yet. So when I was listening to him, he, he didn't say anything, and. And uh, one thing on his defense, there were there were a few good things that I think that he said actually. But one thing I want to say in his defense, he's like, you know, even though we all know it was the wrong decision for America to pull out, right? Hear me out, right? For, no, how we pulled out, how we pulled out, right. leaving our people behind, and yeah, leaving I the think equipment. Ev- I think most and, Americans and the, are for ending the war in Afghanistan. Correct, but, yeah. but I, so correct, I stand corrected. But it's I a know. how you do it, how right. we did it, leaving our people there, leaving our equipment there, which I don't. It, it There's got to be a reason for that. I don't understand what, why, but we have so many military generals and intelligence that are in charge of this thing. Like, why did they have such a massive fuck up? Like, it wasn't. It, it's not Biden who's made the, the day to day. Like, point. these are the logistics of no, what we're that's doing. That's my point. He probably just said to his generals, we're, "We need to be out of Afghanistan Wait, by August." That's what I'm getting. At. That's 30th. why I said that. To right. me, like, like in his defense, he's not the one who said, "Hey, uh, honey, uh, we're gonna go to Flakewoods tomorrow for breakfast." And you know, what? let's just pull everybody out tomorrow. Yeah. He had leaders that had been in office in the military for fifty years, right. giving him advice, and he did say that. He and goes, enacting goes, the sat, plan. He said, "I sat down with these leaders, asked them, and this is what." So, in all fairness, like. Like, what were these? Because I'm not involved in the military at all, and I'm not bright when it comes to these things, but I would know in and myself as a layperson, if we are these people that are work for America, and they're there, okay, we should make sure they're out first and all our documents, they're worried about shredding all of, the, all of our troops left, and now our- And the pe- embassy is alone is, without the military correct. Take your shredding flag, documents. Take your flag down and shred. It makes no, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I don't understand what transpired. The military should have been the last to leave. And by the way, they shouldn't be shredded. They should be burned. Do you know what I'm saying? Because none of it makes sense. And then to leave these 80, I think it's like 80 
million dollars or eighty billion dollars in equipment they left. I forget if it was million. No, there was an eight hundred million dollar base that was just left there. So I, you know, I like to get my friend on the phone. His son is it works. At, a lot of people can't talk about like military people are not allowed to talk about this. There are some military. No, like, I want to ask him. His son goes into these places, and his whole purpose—he works for the um, army—is to destroy the camps and make sure nothing's so there. They can't. Yeah. Nothing so can I'm curious to ask the father what his thoughts are on why they didn't do that. There has Can to be I some that? strategic reasons. Can I text him? Because I, I don't have my phone here. Yeah. You know who it is. Yeah, I have his number. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't understand it. Maybe because he was in the Navy 40 years ago. I'm um, just going to text him. I, 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 there's got to be reasons. Because they're not in comp- The military... Uh, you guys know how I feel about the government. And I think a lot of the branches of government are incompetent. And a lot of government programs are incompetent. The military is the one exception to that rule. They are one of the most competent and efficient organizations in the world. So I don't understand how they fucked this up that much. And it's n- like it can't be all on Biden. The- no, it's because one man doesn't no. have that ability in he this would world. Not, he would not make that decision without speaking to those advisors. And he just wouldn't be able to enact those plans without the military involvement. The problem I do have now with what they're doing is... I'm listening, Brownie. Is there, so we're like, the weird thing is we're working with the Taliban like they're just another government that we do... Well, that's a big that problem, we do deal too. With. That's a big, I don't understand well, that okay. either. They said, listen, they said that we don't trust the Taliban, but we are working with them for, in the sense because they, they fear for themselves what we would do to them, whatever. Who knows? No, I think we just have no choice. We have to rely on them now. We're in a situation where we have to rely on a terrorist group for the safety of Americans. That's a scary world that we're in. I don't know. I, I, think, I think also, though, the Taliban right now will work well with Americans in Afghanistan because they want us out. The Taliban wants us out more than Americans want us out. So they're going to usher us out as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible because they don't <coughs> want us in that country. So now what's your thoughts about... I'm just waiting for him to get back to me. I turn the airplane mode on, but it's sent because I have Wi-Fi. Why do you turn airplane mode on? When I go on the podcast, I don't like to be bothered. I just it will definitely go through. Yeah, it's, it's delivered. delivered. Yeah. Do you know why? Um, what's going to happen now between ISIS and the Taliban? So apparently, these so there were two bombings that happened in Kabul. Uh, Did last any Marines week. die? 11, 12, 12 like- U.S. servicemen died. I think it was like seven Marines. There was a couple of medics. Um, a lot of Afghanis died as well. Civilians. Everything's terrible. They're saying, I don't know enough details about this. I don't think no one knows the, I don't think anyone knows the truth at the moment. I'm sure we'll find out later, but they're saying that it, the bombings were set off by ISIS K, which is a sect of the Islamic State, like good old ISIS as you remember them back when Obama was president and Trump. Um, so ISIS is back as well. ISIS and Taliban are enemies. Like they've never gotten along. And so I feel like now we're in a weird like maybe let them kill each other. But we're in a weird like the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. Like the Taliban and the US are working together to destroy Shocking. ISIS. Like that, that's weird. That's, Vincent, that shows you how what a bad process that if we have to rely on the Taliban to assist us. That shows you how we're yeah. America. That shows you what a fucking joke that to leave a people that we are negotiating with we are we are dealing with terrorists as our allies to get our people out for not even military american civilians american citizens are being are being ushered out of by a terrorist Could organization that's working with the Could US you government. imagine? but at this point what is the us government they have to work with no, the taliban no you fucking come in at this the point fu- they can't yeah you can you, no oh yeah he says yes they can't come let's, in let's now. call him no let's they can't come in now. It would, if they brought all the military presence back Bring in, it would be a war. It doesn't matter. We'll destroy them. Let it be a war. I don't give a fuck. That's let what the military is for. To the- no, that would be... We can't go back in. No, I don't oh, agree shit, with I got to reconnect. Hold on. Ronnie. 
No, I don't technology. agree. Sometimes I don't agree with work. you at all. I think we should. We're the fucking powerhouse. I mean, no, because Dad, we have American civilians there with no, with not much military presence. If we brought in a bunch of military presence, just, the Taliban would, would just kill all our. Not in the middle of course, no, they would know. How night. would they no, not know? Just come right you, in you, fucking. That doesn't there. happen nope. anymore. Nope, I don't agree with you. That doesn't happen anymore. I don't agree with you. Okay, hold on. I just don't agree. Call Tom. Thanks for mentioning names. First name. Got to get off airplane mode. Okay. Oh my God! You think you're fucking booking a plane ticket the way you're doing stuff? Oh my God! Let me start it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey guys. Hey brother, how are you? Can you hey, hear, me? hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear I you. Can hear you just can, fine. Okay, good. So we are. You're on the podcast, as you know. It's not live; it doesn't come out till Monday. But Ron and I are talking about the Afghanistan situation and what transpired. And I was explaining, sure. and I was explaining a good buddy of mine who used to be in the Navy for many years. You know, now has been out, obviously, and and how your son is in the Army, and and um, and you know, of course, we we thank you for you and for him and his dedication to allowing us to have our freedom. You know, we're we're big supporters of the military. You know that, and. <clears throat> You know, your son's part of his duty in the um, army is to go in and destroy all base base camps or any equipment, anything related to that. When you leave, to make sure that the enemy um, has no ability to take any of our stuff and and it has no value. So that's right. So what I'm what you know, and I and I know that like when they left Afghanistan, which we know they did it wrong. Um, you hear that? That yeah, feedback? I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, why do you think we left, we'll get to leaving our civilians there in a moment, but why, what would be, and I know it's not Biden's sole decision, he must have met hey, Joe, with, I got a bad connection, can you hear me okay? I hear yeah. you fine, can you hear us? Yeah, I can, I can hear you on and off, you can hear me fine, but okay, go ahead. I hear you fine. So why do you think, because I'm sure Biden made these decisions based upon after speaking with generals and the top um, military officials, why would we have left Eight hundred million dollars worth of Apaches equipment, um, are the bases without having them destroyed. Why would what's or even thought? brought back? Why? Yeah. Why did we just leave everything? One is why not destroy it? Two is at a minimum. I mean, why not bring it back? But then if not, why not destroy it? What? What's your thoughts? Being that you know, without you know, I'm not mentioning your name, but what's your thoughts behind that? Sure. Well, I mean, it, it is absolutely. Um, there's no explanation. There's no logical explanation other than just. Than just sheer incompetence. You know, I have a lot of connections to high-ranking military officials that are all shaking their heads going. You know, abandoning the air base at Bagram was a tactical and strategical debacle. It's a much bigger base, much easier to defend it. Instead, they're going to put us all in a kill zone in Kabul. Absolute slaughterhouse. And we've seen that happen right now. So, the, the, the answer is, it's defies logic other than just sheer absolute incompetence but how does the At military the in 2021 level. like how are they so incompetent i i would think they are the most competent part of the government like how are they making such bad decisions when there's so many people who are involved in the decision process it just doesn't make sense well what are a couple of things you know my son was in afghanistan just came back and right before christmas right days before Christmas, and he's part of a special forces team that was there specifically to destroy cops and FOPs, cops of the combat outposts and FOPs of the forward, observa- up forward observation base, and to destroy that, that gear that was there, if we couldn't return it, we were to destroy it, or they were destroyed, and, and, and then withdraw from the country, and they did their jobs until, uh, until recently, so it, it defies it defies uh, total logic on this thing. The only thing I can think of is that they were total in denial that the Afghan army would collapse as quick as it did and therefore got totally caught by surprise. That's the only thing I can think of other than uh, other than they, they just sheer total incompetence and, um, you know, there was some kind of setup on this whole thing. I hate to think of it that way, but I just think they're total incompetence. Now, interestingly enough, the head, number one enlisted person in the United States Army, the day this whole attack happened, was tweeting out about 
female soldiers and uh, hair days and, and all this other crazy woke crap that, that they're worried about. We have such watered down the leadership, my opinion, and other senior military people that I know we're talking officers, general, a couple of people I know that just got out of the military within the last year or two so wait, years. So who was tweeting that, that out? Uh, well, uh, oh, that was the Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army. That wow, is the God. highest ranking, highest ranking enlisted military personnel in the entire United States Army. Wow. So, a couple things. <laughs> well, you, you go on the Twitter feeds, you go on the feeds, the, the military is, uh, I hear officers telling me, you know, we may not uh, be combat ready, but we're sure not going to miss the diversity um, and an inclusion lecture for sure. We're oh, not going to miss a gay pride day <laughs> celebration. We might miss a training thing, but we're not going to miss any of that kind of stuff. I'm fucking and it's believable. absolutely degraded the, the fighting <laughs> capability of our, of our force military. Um, you know, military people I know are just absolutely beside themselves in disgust with this. And, uh, you probably have seen in the papers now, we have um, retired Navy SEALs and Green Berets on their own dime have gone back into the country and rescued up to 630, uh, 630 people, Americans wow. and Afghan interpreters, as of today, with wow. their own money. That's how incompetent. Mm. They're losing faith in our military. Oh, so it's crazy. It's grim right now, and there needs to be, in my opinion, this McKenzie, he's got to go right away. This commanding general of the Southern Command, um, absolutely crazy. To let the Taliban be our outward line of security. <laughs> I know. It is. It is. There's, I, I'm heart sick over this. There are 13 uh, Marines, and, uh, and there was two soldiers in there, and a, and a Navy a corpsman who are dead today. There were parents, just like me and you, John, mm. that got the worst phone call of their lives mm. yesterday. And these kids were kids. They're 20-year-olds. You and I both know 20-year-old mm. kids, right? Yep. Uh, you know, it's absolutely a travesty. And it was yeah. after and the fact. Like, it didn't, it was unnecessary. We were, the war was over. We were leaving. It, it's just so absolutely. sad. So, now, these Taliban people that we have, who was our sworn enemy up until a little while ago, they're supposed to be out of the rim of uh, security. There's no doubt they let these suicide bombers in. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Right. They hate How America. They don't give a fuck about America at all. Please. Right. So let me ask, can I ask you, I want to ask a couple other uh, questions based on your, because I, I value your, your comments based on your prior experiences and what your son currently does. So one, a couple of questions. One is why would, what's your thoughts on like, as a layman, I would know you, I would never leave the U.S. civilians that work for our country without like, you know, uh, you, not even shred the documents, but let's leave them there and then later tell them we're back home, oh, shred the stuff, pull the flag down, batten down the hatches, lock the doors, and, and we'll, we'll get to you soon. I mean, I don't understand. Like, imagine you saying oh, the house is burning and you tell your kids, um, don't worry, just put, run some water, go in the bathtub. No, it's like, it's soon. like if the house is burning and you and mom leave, get in the car, leave, <clears throat> and then go it. to a different state. And then you're like, all right, we'll boys, here's what you do. Make sure to, to right. get the water that's running right, that's to try I mean. to fight so, the fire. So, so I don't understand that. And, I, and then I also don't understand why don't we take back our equipment? Like, why would we leave the equipment there? So, so a couple things. One, um, terrible incompetence and, and poor planning. The first thing that should have been done is, number one, kept Bagram. Number two, kept uh, the Kabul airport. Remove all the civilians first. It's just the, the way, Bron, you said it. It's remove the civilians first. Remove the Afghan interpreters. Remove all the people that are now on the kill list. Right. Which, I don't know if you've seen this. We actually, the naivete, we turned over a list mm -hmm. of Americans and Afghans that have been assisting us Unbelievable. Through the Taliban, right. say, if you see these guys, Help us. can you let them through? Right. Yeah. Could you imagine? You know. So we we no, we gave we gave we... the enemies a list of here's who you would want to capture. No, right. It's just, I don't understand who. What? But who who? But Tom, who does that? Who's making that decision? I, I, I would I, yeah, obviously somebody in the in the State Department. It's not Biden. Um, it's not. Listen, we listen. Get, whether you like Biden or not, I'm not a fan of him. I think he's incompetent. But it's not Biden doing that. It's not. No, it's not Biden doing it. Biden sets the tone. Biden sets the pace. 
but you've got military leaders that have been watered down, that have been re-educated, so to speak. Um, we have senior State Department officials that, you know, just don't get it anymore, that literally it's just sheer incompetence. The latest thing that, that was on the news this morning, I read in, uh, in the newspaper, is we left, we left the, um, the embassy, we left all the biometric data behind, and they have our gear now. So that's the kind of thing where they take a picture of your eyes, <coughs> yep, and, they, yep. you could, and they'll know who worked for us and who didn't work for us. So we've really set Oh, my a God, there's so many security. It's scary. See, this is what like, I told you. So many security so America threats. America is a threat. America is a threat, 100%. Yeah, Without and a doubt. Without because a of doubt. us, we've given them all. It's like giving someone your okay. your computer password, and then they hack into your computer. Yeah. Like, oh my god, how, no, why are you no, hacking my you computer? Are, you understand, this is all because of our weak government. This would not have happened with Trump. I guess it's just it wouldn't happen. It's with Trump. crazy to realize. I guess we're seeing it play out that the like wokeification of America has infiltrated even the military, and so the fact that like all that shit has made our culture and society weaker. It's also made our military weaker, I guess. It's 100% pussification. That's yeah. what it is. Without a doubt, Ron and John, you know, you've seen those commercials recruiting people in the oh military. Oh my God. Does that, make, and, does that aggravate well, you? That's a fucking trigger for me, dude. Does that the most, absolutely. is that the, that, that to me is the worst fuck. That's so fucking offensive to the fucking armed forces. It makes, um, literally, Tom, I don't know what to fucking say. It fucking infuriates me. Well, here, interestingly, like, I've gotten feedback from people that are in the military, in special forces, that they spend, we're, we're sending our, our troops to, um, uh, to uh, transgender classes. Uh, understanding classes yep. and, uh, and think, that is crazy. Crazy. Craziness. So let me ask this question. Absolutely. Let me ask this question. So if you were a UFC fighter, the only goal, the only goal to be in a, when you're in a, a fight is to win at any cost. That's, That's the only goal. I don't care if you fought fair, unfair. To me, it's all about winning. It's not about being your buddy. It's not about following the rules. Your goal is just to win. If you're going to jeopardize and threaten my fucking family, my goal is to kill you. I don't care how I do it. I don't care if I follow, don't follow rules. I'm going to kill you. In the armed forces... We need the biggest, the strongest, and the brightest. I don't care if they're all white. I don't care if they're all black. I don't care if they're fucking all transgender. I don't care about any. I just want the biggest, strongest, and smartest so they fucking kill anyone. By the way, I hate to say this, even other civilians that are not Americans, anyone in their way for their purpose to protect the freedom of my family in America. That's all I care about. Nothing else. Everything else means nothing Absolutely. to me. Plain and simple. Absolutely. Honestly, part of it, agree, Brian? the more I think about it, the more strategic it's, war. No, it honestly feels brain. like it feels like China and Russia are like our enemies have purposefully over the last 20 years made us weaker, made our culture, it like made us care about <coughs> trans, LGBT, sensitivity training, all that stuff with the purpose of it weakening not only our culture and our economy and our society, but now even our military. Like China's military doesn't do that shit, but then they complain to us when they right when the biden officials and first met with, right. and why do the, we even with care the chinese what they officials say? the first thing they said was your country is so racist black people in your country are oppressed it's like what why would you even say that but they're purposely can't. trying to sow seeds those seeds in our country because now look at it our it, our military is even it's now the non-stop that why americans care so much about how everybody else feels it's manufactured. And, no, it's it is. forcibly but, but, but created in this country. It's, it's a major fucking problem. And our, we lost our police. Oh, so I was... So, right, it's manufactured so 100%. I was, so I met a... Mom and I met this girl in, in the Miami condo. She lived in Manhattan. She moved here a year ago. She said... This is what she said. She's a 20-year-old kid. She said she moved from Manhattan because the homeless and the drugs, she says, that a control. And she says, there is not a single police officer to be found. In New York City. Tom, could you imagine? Not a, she said this. She's 28 years old. She goes, I moved because there was I didn't feel, not a single, and I said, can you blame them? Not a single 20, uh, a uh, police officer in Manhattan. Yeah. So now what's And even have, if wait, there were, they wouldn't they would, be able to do anything. And would you, would you blame them? I wouldn't want to fuck. I would no, hide but out. even like now legally, they're not allowed to right. do much. So now you had that. So now the next step is our military. Yes. So America is fucked. We're fucked. Listen, the, uh, the, the Chinese... Um, the Russians, particularly the Chinese, they think in terms of decades and mm -hmm. hundreds of years, mm -hmm. not in terms of 
next six months. And Americans, we don't think that way. Right. And they have a long-term master plan. And someday, if we don't get our act together, the United States, Will be a forming colony for China. It That's already it already gonna. practically is. They own like half of the the land in America. So what are we gonna right. do? What do we do? I don't fucking know. See, I I think I'll be dead by then. The I kids- hopefully think that this is a wake up call. You know, uh, you guys know me, Brian. You know me your entire life, and John. We go back to your baby. Um, this is the kind of thing that you know. I finally I've had enough. I've had enough, and we got to start doing some things. To take this to take this whole thing back because um, I'm heart sick over this this whole thing and quite frankly we're not out of the woods yet that could happen again as we speak. Oh my right. God, absolutely! So I think I think it's just the beginning, Tom. I think we we're, we've opened up a huge can of worms now that Tal- the Taliban has control of a country. ISIS is back and bigger than ever. It's like but did, we've opened up a huge can of worms. Did I not now tell you we're going to have a lot of terrorist attacks with Biden? I said that. But so Tom, let me ask a question. So I agree because I'm fed up too. The pro- and I'm a control freak, and you're a leader by nature as well. But my question is, I don't know what to do. Like, what, how, how do we, what can we do as people that feel this way? What can we do? I feel helpless. Well, number one is we got to speak our minds. Number two is we got to get the right people elected. The right way, the fair way, get behind people that have the same thoughts and beliefs, which is protecting the United States. Protecting the United States. I know, but Tom, I need to. I think that's even a bigger problem because the culture. That's what I'm saying. There's a sickness in the culture. The United States citizens don't want to protect the United States. That's the problem. These are the voters. So, so when you have these kids that graduate college, like Bronson's age, that are spoon fed by the parents, and they don't, and they become like like Zach, who now is an ass being so fucking hippies, grew up in a Jewish household with a father being a lawyer and all educated, and now he lives in his grandparents place in Aspen and doesn't want to work and it's like this hippie and anti-America the point is we're teaching our generation so so how is it I agree with you Tom I have a solution and I've said it from the beginning of the podcast hold that thought for a second I do want to hear it yours and my generation Tom we're similar age is old school and we're like fuck it we'll fight with our fucking fist the younger generation even I don't mean sound bad against my kids, but but they're pussies. They want to talk everything out. There's no physicality behind it. Uh, the men don't look like fucking men. When I was in Hawaii, the men look like men. I go to fucking LA. Literally, literally, every guy. I was the manliest guy there, and that's saying listen, something. Every guy. <laughs> by the way, Tom, Nell Nell can fit in their jeans. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Meaning, it, it, no. But the the, the guy, there's not one guy who fucking backing you up in a fight. And the problem is these are our voters. This is what's going on. I don't see. So I want to hear, Brian, I want to hear what you say. I mean, honestly, it's like there's a cancer in our society, in our culture, that keeps spreading, right? Like there's something that got in the brains of American culture 20 years ago that has spread like a cancer. And it takes more and more. It takes over more parts of our country each day. Not even like geographically. It takes over the media, right? The media has been taken over by the cancer. Yeah. Now the military, right? So it's like, it's taking over everything. What do you do to a cancer? You have to cut it out. And how I think you do with that, honestly, which I've been saying from the beginning of the podcast, is we have to, we can't all be in the same country. <laughs> we have to split up. We have to have a country where it's like, if you want to believe in that Never shit, happening. you live in that country, have your own borders, do, do your shit, let China sure. take you over. We'll have our own country where we fucking have a strong military. Yeah, I don't want China to protect our borders. No, no. I need America to be America. America is a large. We're too big yeah. to be united no, no, at no, this no. point. I don't. Geographically, we are a large amount of land. I don't want fucking China next door to us. No. Well, so a couple, couple things. One, there is hope. You know, even Leon Panetta was on the news the other day. We're talking about a Democratic, you know, CIA director on the Democratic administration, Secretary of Defense, and he was very, very clear. It was interesting. It's on CNN. And he was talking about this, and he was going on to say, we will, I promise you to the commentator that was there, we will be back in Afghanistan shortly because uh, of, of the uh, reemergence of al-Qaeda, of ISIS, ISIS-K, of Special K, whatever the names that come up for these guys, because this is all just the beginning of the end. And so I think this is the one straw that broke the camel's back that could be crosses both party lines, but we've got to keep yeah. that momentum. In. The other last point I just want to make is that if you go back, as a student of history, you go back to World War II was the last war where America was all in. We were all in on the whole thing. If you're at home, you were affected by it. If you're at, Obviously, if you're on the front, you were affected by it. When you signed up in the military, you were in for the duration. So we fought to win, to get out, to get home, and, and make it happen. 
starting in Korea, we started with these one year, you know, ro- rotating people out. So it became a very administrative type war. Vietnam was the same thing. And we've seen that go on and on and on. Having a son that was, uh, you know, had been in, has been in the special forces for uh, as long as he has, he's been overseas, he's been in combat. Um, if you didn't know me though, guys, this war really is, yeah, oh yeah, it's something I see on the news once in a while. We're not affected by it. Right. So the average American really is something you see on the news if you even watch the news. And we're not all in on it and we've gotten complacent. And that's allowed us to become soft. Yep. And it's just another form of just keep giving us stuff and we're going to we look the other way. And that's my, my opinion. Complicated Agreed. solution. But your, your podcast and talking about it is the first step. And I know, and there's a lot of people our age, veterans, non-veterans, people who have uh, sons and daughters that are uh, the age of these young men and women. I think there's a female that's still over there as well that have given everything, everything. I just want to leave you this picture because I cannot get out of my head. There was a picture I saw where they had eight of the Marines and they were standing next to these uh, um, Afghan uh, refugees. They're trying to get through and they're just trying to help them, give them water, do this, you know, get them through the line. 20 year old, 21 year old, 22 year old kids. And then the next picture is they're all gone. It's absolutely despicable. And I will never forgive our leadership for what they did. Our military leadership, and Biden for what he has done, regardless of your Trump Biden, it has makes no difference to me. Absolutely despicable. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Well, Tom, um, really appreciate it. Um, love you. You know, value the friendship, value your comments and your and your knowledge. And I think that our our listeners and viewers will be very uh, wanting to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Different, so I really the expertise you know, that you yeah, bring. Yeah, this to was it. definitely a necessity, and and I thank you. And we just have to keep speaking our mind and. And and hopefully get better people in office and and not fucking back down and and when people are in America that are, that talk bad about America, we need to fucking speak up and time to go fuck themselves and time to get the fuck out of our country uh, because America, even though with our problems, is the best country in the world. It's supposed to be the most powerful. We have our freedoms. We can't allow our freedoms to be taken away from us. Um, like Bronnie always said it so eloquently at many, many months ago, if you give the government power, they, you, once you give up power, you can never get it back. And there's a lot of truth to that. So, um, Absolutely. hopefully these parents could educate. That also them. goes to anything, and anything, anything in the world. Once right. you give another person power of yours, no one gives you're not getting it No back. one gives up powers or, yeah. or, or, or when you give up your freedoms, you never get it back. So never. I think we have to keep speaking our mind and we have to, as my generation, your generation, which is the same, Tom, I think we have to fucking, uh, just instill on our kids to fucking stand firm, grow a pair of balls, let the men be men, and um, and fight for our country and our freedoms, and and just to not back down like this kneeling shit. I'm a, you know n- never fucking kneel. You know what I'm saying? So so yeah. I appreciate your opinion, your your expertise, your your son's fucking uh, loyalty to our country and fighting for the freedom. I know he's had some very close near death experience, which we don't need to go into. Um, and there were more than two times that we're lucky he's alive because he almost died two times by uh, providing services and yours many years ago. So love you. We thank you. Thanks for coming on and listeners. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of positive feedback from you, from what you had to say, Tommy. Well, I appreciate it guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, Thanks, keep Tom. doing what you're doing. People All can't right. be afraid to speak out, man. Very proud of both of you. All right, brother. I'll talk to you during day. the week. Bye, Love buddy. You. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Great guy. So I'm not just leave that. Leave All right. So <clears throat> it's interesting. You know, he says it much more eloquently than I do because he's. You and know, he also he, has a lot. Like we we talk and share our opinions on this podcast, but we a lot of times a lot of times we have no backing behind our opinions. We're just like, this is how we feel. He has first-hand experience on multiple aspects of yes it. his son was one of the people in afghanistan yep. he served in the military yeah, he's, he's still, a father he's a father he still communicates with military officials yes. often yep. so he has a lot of uh, interesting good aspects to it crazy shit isn't it the incompetence yeah. scary isn't that, when he said that that leader that top leader yeah was talking tweeting that shit out that's fucked up right so before the before we got to, before Fuck. we got him on the phone Remember, I was saying, I just Ugh. don't understand. I don't know why they would make such bad decisions. Honestly, now I guess it is because they're morons. They're just they're, morons. Right. 
like how how you how the podcast always starts with people are stupid. Yes, I think it's infected the military as well because they're just fucking people. It's he, gotten he, he into every up aspect of society. I want to bring up that he brought the fucking advertisements up. Could but you isn't imagine? that scary that the that the dumbing down of our culture and the the misplaced importance on Issues. identity politics. Issues, yeah. Is now in every aspect of our of our world that it literally is making terrorist organizations being able to beat the U.S. government. That that's terrifying because I don't get because it. Because if it keeps going that way, what's twenty years going to be? No, like? that's what scares me. The future. Correct. What's our military going to be like? What military? If the Taliban can take can beat us, no problem. No and problem. Then we give the us. list of the people. Yeah. Could you imagine? I'm going to be out Fuck. of town. Here's this combination of my safe. Go rob me. It Bronson, again, I'm not a know but it, know it all, but it doesn't make sense. No, and now, honestly, it, it kind of does. doesn't make sense. It kind of does make sense because the military is infected by wokeism. Okay, but you are saying it doesn't make sense. That's what I'm trying to get yeah, at. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's the same as- That's why I honestly, it honestly same. feels like it was purposefully manufactured Ronnie. decades ago to be like by the Chinese or know, even our cons- enemies. That's a conspiracy No, theory. just to be like, we're going to weaken America from the inside out. We're going to get into their culture through the internet, make them all worried about the wrong things. Could be. Could be. You're right. With TikTok. Like this. When you watch the NFL ad, NFL is gay. It doesn't make sense. Right. That just does not make sense, period. No. The NFL is not gay. The NFL is football sports. The two guys The NFL is kind of gay, but- No, but you understand what I'm trying to say? It just does not make sense. Yes. Or you represent America. You represent America as an Olympian. And you get up on the podium as a gold medalist or whatever, a bronze medalist, and you do the signs anti-American. It just, none of it makes sense. Or fat is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Let's celebrate, the, let's celebrate the guy who wants to become a girl who wants to compete in men's sports. Let's celebrate that. None of it makes sense. Let's celebrate an Olympian, okay, um, who, who has a bad day and quits. And, but, not, and, Rather, but not celebrate the Olympian who won gold. Co- no, why would we do that? Right. Let's celebrate the Olympian who quits and says, oh, my aunt died. And, you know, good for you. You should let Suni Lee, I forget what her name was, the young gymnast. She's like 16 year old no American gymnast who no won one, gold. No one knows. And no one's talking about her. No one was. Wait, better yet, what about the fucking, everyone talking about that, that guy who became a woman who went to become a weightlifter? Mm-hmm. But what about the woman who, who, who won, the yeah. American? No one knows her name. No, no one, because that's not, but that's why I said it's misplaced it's importance. It's so fucked up. It's the, so what, fucked what, up. What we value in this, in this society and the importance that we place on things is wrong. It's just, it's, our priorities See, in I this country are I think it's manipulation. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I think it's purposeful. I agree. That's I what think, I was saying. I think I it's do, manufactured. I think it's, 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 it's purposeful for whatever reasons I don't get. And people are fucking stupid. And that's. It's the same person when I'm walking in the street or I'm driving, I see a dumb fuck in their own car by themselves with a mask on. Okay, I want, is it wrong me I want to take my car and fucking jam it in their car and say, you stupid fuck? Yes, that is wrong. You're in your own car by yourself. (laughs) That's wrong of you. If you're one of those people listening that you drive in your car by yourself with a mask on. Sometimes you forget. Sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh, fuck, I still have my mask no, on. But you understand, yes. you understand what I'm saying. What were you going to say? You're going to say, if you're one of those people. Ask why your parents abuse him to go to the edge of a cliff. No, he's teasing you. It fucking doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. And I'm yeah. worried about the next 20 years. I'm worried about you kids. And I know when I'm dead, I can't worry anymore. But you guys, I'm worried about you guys and your children. Me too. You should be. I am. You need to speak the fucking truth. Like Tom says, you need to fucking get out there. And, and we need to start convincing people. No, but that, pussy, that, pushies, but push, isn't that what we do with this podcast? We're we do talking pussy to generation. People. Your generation is the weakest fucking generation I've ever come across in my entire life. I've never met. You've a only group. come across two generations in your whole life. So, uh, and, but I could say my entire life. Yes. It is the weakest fucking generation. Everybody, bunch of pussies. It's unbelievable. I can't get over that. Like everybody's got to be made happy. Every kid. Needs to be made happy. Why? How about just get to your fucking room and shut the fuck up? Get out of my face. Can't do that. Seriously, everyone. Oh my god, that's offensive. That's a you should apologize. That's offensive. Really, it's offensive. You got to apologize for things being offended. You didn't punch something in the fucking face. Words could be so hurtful. Give me a fucking break. Seriously, they're fucking words. They're not a gun. They're not a knife. It's not a baseball bat to the no, fucking but see, head. That's so in 
in that Jesus. book that I always talk about because it's such a great book. Everyone I want should that read. book. Does Bubby have it? Get no, me the fucking mom book. has it. It's I want in your f- room. It's literally in I your bedroom right now. I want the fucking book. So in the book, The Coddling of the American Mind, they talk about, and it's very interesting when you put it into perspective like this. They talk about how you were just saying words are just words. They're not a gun. They're not a knife. But in in my generation, how we think and how the mind of my generation has evolved over the since 2014. So like when I was in middle school, high school, bullying was a big thing, right? It was I like remember that. Every, bully, there was a, a national epidemic about bullying. God. Every school, every commercial was talking about ending bullying, right? So there's a big bullying problem, maybe. <laughs> bullying. But then the thing is, people started to kill themselves. So a lot of people, wait, wait, wait let, me, let me go through this because a lot of people in middle school and high school over the last decade, suicide numbers have skyrocketed okay. in teens. I want to say something. Because, like well, who knows? There's a lot of factors to it, but a lot of it is, can be drawn back to them being bullied with words. Okay. So a lot of people my age have create have now think about it in a different way and the, the book lays this out for you and it says <laughs> that was the water it says that kids now view words as a gun or bad as man. that because a word saying yeah. the wrong word to a person can trigger them to kill themselves okay. so words therefore if you extrapolate that words can take lives just guns can take okay. lives. So that's why like people want gun control because they can take lives. People want word control because they okay. can take lives. I don't agree with that. But when you think about it that way, no. you can see you, – if you put yourself into that mindset, which is what a 19-year-old American thinks, 19-year-old liberal American, you can see why they then live the way they do. Okay. And want safe spaces and want... Okay, but, but let, me, let me give my thoughts on that. Control okay. of speech let and me, let pronouns me, right, and all let, that. Let me, let me talk about that. So, and I, I'm not trying to be callous or because I don't want anyone taking their life. Okay, I really, I, I, I think that someone that takes their life is, it's beyond sad. It hurts the people that survive that person and loves them. And it's a, it's a you're a very disturbed, broken human being taking your life. Okay, it just doesn't happen from one set of words. It builds up. It's not like all of a sudden one day. But wait, not wait. with teens. That even right. in the in the show Nine Perfect Strangers that we're watching, remember? He, yes, he said, oh, "Don't tell no, no, don't," because people might not have watched it. Listen, wait, I want to say this. But first. it's it's a lot of times with teens, it's a spur of the okay, moment. But I want to say this: teens don't think but I, long. But I want to like say this. Okay, yeah. life is long. You have your whole life ahead of you. People are gonna offend you no matter what. Maybe. Like Louis C.K. says with the peanut allergy, just maybe, just saying, right? So I know it's whole, listen, listen. Finish listen, that. Said, finish that. Meaning, peanut he thing, says though. that if we don't worry about the peanut allergy and it goes through its net cycle and people die, he's of saying if allergy, like for one generation we all just close our eyes and let who you and just let no everyone eat peanut allergy, allergy. right? So listen, which is it, horrible, but like no, it also might need to be done. No, no I want to say this for a second because I, I need to preface this very important. By no means any death is 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 wasteless. It's sad. It should never happen. I feel for anybody that loses anybody. I feel the person that's trouble that commits suicide. It's sad. And I want you to understand that I, I'm being I have a compassion and understanding of it. But I want to say another thing. It's a huge disservice if we fall into that. If you remember, I told you I was bullied growing up. So I changed my ways. I went with the martial arts and working out and things like that. If we Play down, dumb de- down mm-hmm. to the lowest denominator. If we, rather than building people up, it's a breakdown of our system and it's the worst thing we could do. So if you are fucked up, if you are insecure, if you commit suicide, I hate to say this, but it sucks for you. you need, we need to toughen up our generation. We need to say, safe space is the worst thing. It's kind of yes. like, you said the COVID shot. It was counterproductive because by the everybody getting the COVID shot, it made the virus by nature mutate. By everyone getting it quickly. Quickly. Yes. So by my, everyone getting it at one time. So my point there's... is, if we start saying like this, no, 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 don't talk about that. He's sensitive to it. No, fucking talk about it and make that kid less right, sensitive it is interesting. to it. It's an interesting way to, to try to solve a problem by saying, let's all go down you do. don't do that. No. So, so it so, doesn't listen, make sense. If my son, but that's the culture we live no, in. But, but, but because but, we all now we try to change the majority for the minority correct. in this country. But if I look at my children, 
every one of you has strengths and weaknesses. If there's something you want, and you let's say you want to win that race being not the fastest, I'm not telling the kids to slow down. You know what I'm say to you? Man the fuck up, train morning, noon, and fucking night, and become the best fucking runner and there even is. then, you might not be the best, and you but know that's what? the way it is. Who gives a shit? Right. Suck it up, look in the fucking mirror. I don't believe in that pussy shit. I don't believe in the conversations for everything. Just if I want you to get the fuck out of my face, man, I tell you to punch the kid in the face if they're bullying you. This whole dynamic. I also do we, think we create weakness and, yes. and, and other countries create strength. We award weakness. We don't award winning. We don't award good behavior. We award the outcast. We award yes. the weaker one. We award the broken one. We award the one who's who's ill or disturbed. No. When we, listen, it's just changing words. You can't call somebody a maid anymore. You can't call somebody this. It's funny. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what you are. By the way, I think a lawyer's offensive. Don't call me a lawyer anymore. Call me an advocate. Are you fucking kidding me? I, I do think that a pussy, honestly, pussy, pussy, a bit of bullying is constructive for someone's life i think like being put down a little bit when you're young being made being forced to realize that there are some people in the world that just don't like you for no reason that's okay being forced to realize the world isn't fair or nice right or nice i think that those are that's not fun none of that's fun but that's honestly i think having a little dose of that not a lot because a lot is counterproductive. That causes someone to, that causes someone to live a worse life. But I think a small dose of that for every human is beneficial because you're going to fucking get it in your life all the time. Every single all person the in their life, in their adult life, is going to experience someone being mean a to dick. them. Yep, someone dick. being unfairly like right unfair to them, where you're like, what? I didn't deserve that. The world being hard to them. The world is hard, Bronson. Right. The world is a harsh place, just naturally. Look at even outside of human society, which we've made so much better. The natural world is a harsh fucking place. Look at the animals living in the That's wild. That's what I'm saying. It's could you, so could harsh. Could you imagine? Do you so the, brutal. The best thing is tough love. Right. So that I'm just saying, I think it's good to get a dose of that when you're developing so that you learn at a young age, oh, you know what? The world isn't all rainbows and unicorns. Some people are just not going to like me, but you know what? That's okay. And I know, can deal with that. You know whose fault it is? All the parenting. Okay, the parents, if, if your kid is insecure or your kid has social issues, things like that, it's the parent's obligation to make them the best you mean they can be. It's your obligation as a parent. And also sometimes bullying, bullying has a negative connotation now, but like sometimes some of that is also just the pack correcting itself. Like Correct. It's kids figuring out what where they, they can do. And where they fit in that group. Yes. Because not everyone's a leader. And like sometimes, sometimes when you're a kid, I remember feeling this way, when you're an awkward teenager and you're like trying to find your new identity and stuff, right? And you, you sometimes do things or you're like, you wear something new to school because you're like, I think this is, I'm going to try to show people that I'm changing myself, right? Yeah. And sometimes that's not good for the person. Because you you're going too far outside the norm. It's just not who you are, and that and a bit of bullying, a bit of people teasing you, being like, "Ew, why are you wearing that shirt? That's such a weird shirt." I don't think that that's such a bad thing. I I, I think it's great for people to be individuals, express themselves but how you, they want but to. You need to be secure with who you are. Who gives a shit? Right. Why would they give a shit? But there there's also like you still are existing in society, and society has like when you live with. Pe- Community. A group of people, a community, yeah. you you need to fit in. That's just part of being a, hu- a successful Nothing human. Wrong with that. Is fitting in with the norms of society. Yeah. And so if you're trying, if you're pushing those norms too much as a kid, b- bullying a bit of it is society, the natural society correcting, correcting it and keeping everything in. Don't I? Always, we don't have that anymore wait. though. Now pe- the the people who are more the more abnormal, the more weird are the coolest ones. And when I think we accept them more. That's showing the, uh, that's like a bit of a, the degradation of society. Don't I say all the time adversity builds strength? You need it. You need it. We create the wind. the hardest the the best things in my life that I know have shaped my brain and made me a better person are all from the hardest parts of my life. Always the easy fun parts of my life have ne- have not impacted me. Like the hard parts of my life, mm. it at makes all, sense. and of course, of course, that makes sense. That's literally, I mean, you you, you, you need it. to put <coughs> you, va- you need you to value it. challenge, you value and it, pressure, yeah. and stress to build you success. up. Success, I agree. 
It's like fucking, this is so cliche, but like pressure makes diamonds. Yep. That's a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I agree. We have weak people. We have to fucking start, start, um, not bullying people, fucking laying the fucking law down. Yeah. I, when I was Lay in the L- law down, when I was in LA, I was, when I was in LA last week, I was out with the girl and we're at a bar and we're just sitting and people watching and observing. And there's this group of women who are none sure of they weren't guys. None of them had good bodies. They weren't fat, but they just weren't okay. good bodies. Right. And they were wear, they were all wearing oh, the very, outfits are crazy. They yeah. were wearing very short dresses, and all their like stomachs were open. Yep. But they weren't nice stomachs, which is fine. Whatever. No, but you don't come on. So they're all maybe literally for thirty five minutes. No exaggeration. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not being hyperbolic at all. For thirty five minutes, they were taking pictures, the same picture, in just different on angles, like this I know. or like this. I know. Different That's poses. Our future, and. None of them. Now, you don't want. Good. You don't want to take a bat to their head. See, no, I see okay. that. I want. I, no. I. It triggers me. I want to fucking like. I want to see. I would go up and say something. I'm like, are you fucking no, but so kidding me? So I said me? to the person I was with. Fucking I was like, assholes. you know what? Or she, I think she was like, wow, they have no shame. That and I was like, no, maybe I said that. But then I said, honestly, I think it's good to have a little shame. To be a little shameful. Yes. To be a little like. Oh, I don't look good in this. I actually don't know if I should wear this because my stomach is hanging over my shorts just a little. That's okay to feel that way. I agree. I agree. That's not actually that's not okay to feel that way. It's good to feel that way. It is. Because you it you keep you when you're out yourself. in society, you don't need to always be I agree. Open fully. Like I agree. sometimes you it's okay to be a little shameful, right. a little a little insecure to the point where you're like I'm just going to wear a little more of a conservative thing because I don't feel comfortable right now in my body. I see it. I would, I mean, the f- to oh, an please, extent, don't even get me you don't want to go down that road too much because that's very sad and there are problems with that. No, but, but a little but, bit of shame but, in everyone, I think there, is good. You're, and not a little ca- bit of you're not cared about what other people think. You care about what you think and you know, you know good. right? Like I see like with my belly's hanging out of shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care what you think. I don't like it. Right. I feel uncomfortable with it. Same. All right. This is interesting. I thank Tom for coming on. We so think. I literally had so many things I wanted to talk so about. Again, I literally I wanted to talk about. There's all this stuff going on with Jeopardy. There's all this drama with Jeopardy. I know nothing about there's it. There's all this stuff I wanted to talk about Trudeau and all this stuff that he said. Look at all these this stuff oh, that I have. Planned. No, we're not even remotely close. We'll I want to talk to. about. I want to talk about Larry Elder and the California recall election because I think you'll be interested in what that. What is going on with that? Right. So I want to talk. That's when does that thing. come out? The recall votes this are happening week? right now. Like people are voting. Right. Right. So I it'll be. Soon. I heard ads in L.A. You know that. Yeah. For Newsom, there's a lot of DeSantis stuff with the media that I want to talk about, okay. and like big sense, big tech censorship. Yeah, but that's we didn't purpose, get to any that's of this purposeful because now the elections are going to be within yes. two years, and they're, that's all they're, they're already they they're know starting. that he's going to be like a they're Trump starting. Starting. exactly. Hundred percent. So this that. is all stuff I want to talk about. We didn't get to any of it, of course. So if you want to listen to that stuff, uh, we're going to talk about those topics on the Patreon episode, which comes out on Wednesday. So if you're interested in that, it's Patreon.com/slash Daddy Issues Pod. The link will be right here in the video, or the link is in the description of the of the podcast. And definitely go check that out because I want to talk about all those things, we're and never, we didn't get a we're chance never to do it get today. to them. But this was good. I, I really having Tom on was a good. Uh, yeah, you think I think it was good. And also, if you guys are listening to this, this comes out on Monday night. Tuesday night, we're doing our Patreon Zoom with our with our ten dollar Patreon members. So if you want to hop in a Zoom call for like two hours with us and just hang out Tuesday night, go to the Patreon and do the ten dollar tier, and you you'll get the access to the Zoom link and we'll we'll be and able to hang out. We'll Tuesday be live night. with you hanging out. Exactly right. Yeah. All right. Take us home. Love you, Brian. All right. Love you too, Dad. You're joking, right? Well, I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid.